guys, my name is Kitty. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my May wrap up. So in May, I was a co-host for Escape the Readathon. I ended up reading 20 books. Um, I've never read that many books in a month. I read a lot of good books this month. So let's just get started because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. As always, I don't know how well my synopsis are going to be for the books that I mentioned, but if any sound remotely good, I would suggest looking up on Goodreads and seeing what synopsis is there or going in blind like I like to do. So um, <laughs> just a forewarning before I get into this video. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my reading journal uh, so I can remember what I read. So the first book I finished in May was Blue Exorcist Volume 5. Um, I don't really have many thoughts on it. I am reading Blue Exorcist, like the manga. I really like the anime and so I've been reading the manga read volume 5, not giving them ratings until I'm done with the series and I'll just like overall rate them like if it's like a 4 or 5 star manga but it got too tedious to give every single book a rating so I'm just not rating manga until I finish so I read that, enjoyed it, I really do like Blue Exorcist so it was a good time. The next book I read was The Cypher by Kathy Koja. I saw it at Barnes and Noble and I was like I have heard people talking about this and really enjoying it so I'm gonna pick it up. I ended up really disliking this book. I gave it two stars. It's just really not my type of cosmic horror. Um, I realized that there's like a certain type of cosmic horror that really works for me and then there's a certain type of cosmic horror that does not and this is that type of cosmic horror. So this cosmic horror relies heavily on just the need for the human mind to find patterns and understand. And because this is cosmic horror, we are dealing with things that because they're so cosmic, the human mind is incapable of understanding them. So it's documenting kind of that breakdown where like the human mind is like trying to understand something that it will never understand and essentially going insane because of it. That's not the kind of cosmic horror that I like. I like the cosmic horror where you're learning something that is so vast and unexplainable and just huge in comparison to what you know that you go insane with just even the tiniest amount of that knowledge that's the type of cosmic horror that i like and while this one does kind of like catalog the character's descent into madness it is not because they're really learning anything it's more of them just trying to understand and i know that that sounds extremely similar but in my head there is like a difference in that type of cosmic horror and the cypher's type of cosmic horror is just not for me nothing really happens we don't learn anything um and it's just way too ambiguous for me like it's just it just feels like nothing happens in the story i did really enjoy the writing like i think kathy Koja as a writer is really really good there's some really good quotes in here and i do think she creates really well-rounded characters in such a short novella like the characters are super fleshed out very very multi-dimensional characters um, so I think she does great with that as well. She's a great writer. It's just not the story for me. The next book I read was a KU book. I read Releasing Maledic, which is book 5.5 of the alien romance books that I have been reading. Don't know how to pronounce them. Um, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> but this was the book that I needed, the final book I needed to read so that I could be like completely caught up with the series. And I ended up giving this one five stars because I thought it was super, super fun. And this was like a more action-packed version of all these um, alien romance series. And I thought it was really fun. So yeah, five stars for releasing Maledic. I really did enjoy that alien romance. The next book I read was my first paperbacks from hell. I read The Nest by Gregory A. Douglas. This is a cockroach theme to horror book and uh, it was disgusting. Cockroaches are <laughs> really, really gross. I ended up giving this three stars. I thought it was really fun. The thing that really like took me out of the story was just like some of the pacing was off. Like I just felt like the book was a little bit too long for what it was and there was like a lot of scenes where like these scientists are just talking about like termites and like different types of cockroaches um to try and explain i guess like the reason that these cockroaches were doing what they were doing but i feel like i was just learning a little bit too much about other bugs that i didn't really care about um and i feel like those sections where we have these like explanations about just like colonies of bugs were just slowing down the horror of the book if that makes sense so um i did really enjoy this this is a book from the 80s so like obviously it does have some problematic language whenever you're reading anything from you know older time periods like you kind of have to go into it expecting it it does have some problematic things uh, but i knew what i was getting into before that so i was like 
kind of ready for it and I was expecting it so it did really surprise me but I did really enjoy this I thought it was really disgusting just oh cockroaches are so fucking disgusting I was terrified of seeing a roach like after I finished this book because I was like if I see one like I'm actually going to scream but a lot of really good death scenes in this for sure like there were some nasty ass things that were happening the next book I picked up was Plastic Monsters by Daniel J. Velope I picked this up um because I really liked this cover. I think the cover is really cool. If anything, it's pretty misleading um, on what actually takes place in this book. This is supposed to be commentary on just like the beauty industry and like the need to be beautiful and just plastic surgery and things like that. Um, but it was a little bit too simplistic of a analysis on that part of society, just like how big the beauty industry is. And I definitely wanted a lot more from this book just in general if it was going to talk about the beauty industry i feel like if you're going to set out to do something like that you kind of have to be a little bit more expansive in what you are dealing with it felt really reductive it just felt like um something super simple of just being like oh i'm ugly and i hate beautiful women and i'm gonna kill them because i hate that they're be more beautiful than me it was just so like boring and it's just like such a lame like way to view like beauty standards i don't know it just felt so like boring <laughs> like it truly did and nothing none of the extreme horror was even good like i wasn't shocked by anything nothing that happened really like surprised me like considering that i really liked talia from this author like i was just like thinking that this was going to be like really really gross because it is talking about surgeries and stuff I was like there's so much you could like play with when it comes to plastic surgery um in like it's horrificness but nothing really happened and none of the death scenes were really that shocking I hated the ending so I ended up giving this two stars uh there were some scenes I really did like so I didn't want to give it like a one star but I definitely prefer Talia from this author for sure um this just felt so flat and Pamela the main character just feels like a caricature and it was just it was not good I would definitely not recommend plastic monsters from this author I would definitely go for Talia because I think that's a way stronger book um, and even more disgusting truly um, and if you do want a book with like plastic surgery and stuff like that I would definitely lean for Waif by Samantha Kolznick that book is so good I gave that book five stars and there is like a plastic surgery element in um, Waif that I was hoping to see in this but no waif does it way better so i would definitely recommend that one if you want like an extreme horror with a little bit with some plastic surgery elements there's not really like it's not really commentary on like the beauty industry and waif but um if you like the whole like just the brutality i guess of plastic surgery waif is way better for that so then i started a new manga series this month i only have the fourth volume here but i have read volumes one through four of the girl from the other side i'm borrowing all the volumes from my library so that's why i don't like physically own them but i am loving this manga so much how it's like doing both like this like really cute cozy little cottage core type of vibe with also monsters and religion and um just like all these other themes as well of loss and abandonment but like they're having a tea party it's just so cute i'm like obsessed with this freaking manga and i can't wait to continue i just read volume four um it was my last book for may and it was so good and i can't wait to continue with the series i have the next two volumes from my library and i can't wait to jump into them because I'm obsessed. Again, I don't give manga any rating until I'm like done with the series. So once I'm done with the series, I will either rate it like four or five stars. Because right now it's at a five star because I'm really, really liking it. But we'll see once the whole story concludes. The next book I read was The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This is my first book from Carissa Broadbent. I picked this up because literally everybody loves this book. And I was like, I want to know what's going on. It's vampires. It's a fantasy romance. It's everything I wanted. <laughs> So I picked it up, read it, absolutely loved it. Look at my tabs. I cannot wait to continue in this series. This is the first book in the first duology of the Crown of Nyaxia series. So this kind of starts off um, the whole world build. This was so fun. I loved Oriya. Um, I really liked Rain and I can't wait to see their relationship unfold. I really liked the magic system and the world building. I have so many questions. <laughs> I want to know so much about this world and how everything works. And I can't wait to read the second book because I need to know what happens. Because this ends on a very... 
intense note and it sets up the second book for a lot of tropes that I personally really like so I can't wait to read the second book. I have a feeling that the second book is going to be my favorite from the duology because in this book while it is a five star read I was hoping for a little bit more from like the romance itself. I wanted a little bit more banter between Araya and Rain like I wanted to be kicking my feet and giggling type of thing between them. Um, but the situation that they're put in doesn't really allow for that type of interaction as much so I can't wait for the second book because I feel like the second book situation that they're in I feel like it gives me a lot of time to get my feet kicking and giggling type of moments so I can't wait to read the second book but I really like the first one and I really like the world build and I can't wait to see where this goes. So the next book and probably my favorite book of May which will be no surprise to anyone, is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This book was so fucking good. This book is so hyped. I'm sure you guys have all heard of this. It's apparently sold out everywhere. I am obsessed with this book. I cannot wait for the second book. I'm obsessed with the sprayed edges. I'm obsessed with everything about this book. Low-key sad that this has such beautiful <laughs> sprayed edges because I couldn't like tap it because I didn't want to destroy these. And the second one is also going to have sprayed edges so like I'm just like never going to get to tap these books which physically hurts me because there's so many things that I wanted to tap. Um, but this was so good. I love Zayden. I love Violet. Um, I loved the dragons. The dragons were my favorite thing of this book. Like I'm obsessed with the dragons. And any dragon book that I ever read, like, I need all the dragons to be like these dragons. Like, my expectations for dragons is, like, through the roof. Like, nothing will compare until I get these types of dragons. Um, I thought this was so fun. I had a great time. And I read this super fast. And now I'm suffering the after effects of the crack-like high that I experienced while I was reading Fourth Wing. Um, and just how much fun I had. And... I don't even know like my whole personality is just fourth wing at this point um i loved it so much it's so fucking good so yeah favorite book of the month definitely i cannot speak more highly of this book i loved it so much i thought it was so fun so yes i loved fourth wing the next book i read also a five star read and also one of my favorite books of the year Dark Matter by Blake Grouch. This was a recommendation from Michelle from Michelle's Library for the Mystery Booktuber Recommends Me a Book vlog collab video that I participated in that was created by Lexi. Um, but I read Dark Matter and I love this book so much. I have a dedicated vlog for it which I will leave linked in the card somewhere or in the description. But this book was life-changing. It rearranged my way of thinking um, and I'm obsessed with it. Like I think about it all the time. Anytime something happens in my life, I always think back to this book and I just can't get enough of it. And I want all of you guys to read it because it's truly, I think, a life changing book. <laughs> it might seem like a very exaggerated thing for a sci-fi thriller, but like this was life changing. I loved it so much. This was so good. And I definitely want to read more from this author because I had such a blast and um, I really like the writing. So the next book I read, I also read on Kindle Unlimited. This is Desire in His Blood by Zoe Draven. Um, this is the first book in the Brides of the Kylor series. Uh, I just saw an announcement that the second book is coming out June 13th or something like that. Um, and while this wasn't my favorite like monster romance overall i ended up giving this book three stars i liked some parts of it but i think my expectations were a little bit high for what the book actually was i wasn't a fan of the way that the world build happens it, it was pitched as like an enemies to lovers and while they definitely are enemies to lovers i wanted them to be more enemies <laughs> before they became lovers i learned about nodding in this book which was interesting <laughs> there's a lot of blood play in this book as well yeah so it was a little bit underwhelming but i still had fun and with the announcement of the second book, I'm just kind of like, hmm, I do kind of want to read it now. I'm not, it's not like a priority read for me, but I wouldn't mind continuing on with this world um, and just like these weird berserker, almost vampire, gargoyle-esque men. So I, I don't know. I think I will continue reading it, but like it wasn't my favorite monster romance. Um, but um, 
I did have a silly goofy time. The next book I read was Blood and Secrets by Beatrix Hollow. This was my first Beatrix Hollow. There are a couple of other books from her that I would like to pick up but this was a little short novella about vampires so immediately I was like yes give me those vampires. Unfortunately I did not like this. I ended up giving it two stars but um, it was just I think too short for what it was trying to do. Um, I feel like the stuff that I wanted to be more explored, which was like the vampire stuff, was like super glossed over. Um, and I wasn't like a huge fan of just like the ending. So it didn't really work for me. But I still do want to read a bunch of other things from Beatrix Hollow. Like especially I want to read Myth and Monsters and the like Alice in Wonderland one that she has. Um, so I definitely will read more from Beatrix Hollow, but I definitely did not enjoy this one. The next book I read was Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. I gave this 2.75 stars. Um, I wanted so much more from the romance just between these two. I wanted a little bit more exploration on, um, Briar, just like her past and, you know, the trauma that she has gone through and just kind of like wanted to see more connection between them because they like shared their trauma with each other um but this does have really fun like primal play and there is like a primal chasing which i thought was really fun um but i definitely wanted a lot more from the romance um i am intrigued by the whole like premise of these books like the whole idea of like this deal with the demon and blah 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 i do like the idea of it and i am excited to continue with the series but um, I definitely wanted a lot more from um, the romance itself. But I did like the characters like separately. I like I did really like Briar and I did like Soul. But I kind of wish they had shared more intimacy between each other. Next book I read was There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark. This is my first Sophie Lark. This is like the stalker <laughs> serial killer romance. I feel like this is the one book everybody recommends to read for that type of vibe. I ended up giving it 3.75 stars. Um, I just wanted um, so much more from the characters. I never saw Cole as like a, a villain. Like I was never scared of him and I was never scared for Mara because of him. And I feel like I should have, I should be scared of him in like this type of situation um, or at least fear for Mara's life in this situation. I never did. Um, and Mara, I also wanted a lot from her. Like I thought she was really fun. Like the first like 50 percent of the book like I was like I love this girl so much and I wanted her to do some like insane ass shit to Cole but she never does and she she does like one insane thing that I was like oh my god this is like the funniest thing ever um please continue but that was it and then I was just like okay I'm bored it never went as far as I wanted I think is really where my problem lies with There Are No Saints but I did really enjoy Sophie Lark's writing and I do want to read more of her books um and I still had a fun time, like 3.75 is not a bad rating. I still had a really fun time. Um, I was just expecting to give this book five stars and because I didn't give it five stars, I was kind of sad. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna continue with the series because I asked my friends who have read it and they said that the second book is really bad and also like not even close to being as dark as the first. So if I didn't think the first one was dark, then I definitely <laughs> won't think the second one is dark. So I don't think I'm gonna continue with the series. The next couple of books I read for Smut Den. So the first book I read for Smut Den was Viper by Naomi Lucas. This was my first Naga book. Um, and it is the book, first book in the Naga Bride series. I gave this three stars. I thought it was really fun. I mean, all things considered what it is, I think it's a really fun book. I am intrigued by the whole mystery aspect that is probably going to connect all the books. I did enjoy, um, I always forget how to say his name, Baruksha as a character, but I did wish that Gemma had been a little bit more dimensional. Like I felt like she was really flat as a character and I really wanted to know more about her and I wanted her to have a little bit more of character development, but she just stays very static throughout the book. Um, and I definitely wanted a lot more from her just in general. I wanted to know more about her and just, I don't know, see her evolution. I wanted more from her. Um, but I did have a good time and I am excited to continue with the series. I know for sure I'm going to have a five star read in this series. Um, it might be the second one because I read a snippet of King Cobra, uh, which is the second book in the series. And I'm like, I'm interested. <laughs> just love monster romance. The next book I read for Smut Den was Good Deeds by Catherine Moon. This is a reverse harem android romance. This was my first reverse harem romance and also my first android romance and I had a really fun time with it. I love Nachka, which is our main character. She was so cool. I loved her um, and I loved all her 
mates. Um, I didn't like hate any person that was involved in this reverse harem. I liked all of them. I thought they were really funny. So I ended up giving this four stars. It was really fun, very sweet uh, reverse harem. And uh, it was just, it was so cute. It was really cute. And then the final book I read for Smut Den was Veronica's Dragon by Ruby Dixon. This is the second book in the Ice Home series. I loved this so much. I wanted to end on a five star banger and this one was the five star banger because anything Ruby Dixon writes, I automatically give a five star to. And this was no exception. I, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. And this introduces us to kind of like a new species that Ruby Dixon has like a specific series for. It's like Fireblood or something like that. Um, and I'm like, I want to know. Like, I want to read that series. Um, I'm obsessed with dragons now because of Fourth Wing. So <laughs> this was like scratching a weird itch. Um, and now I want to read more from this one specific series that Ruby Dixon has because these motherfuckers are weird, like weird. Uh, I thought it was super fun. I had a blast reading this. Um, and yeah, I needed to read this because I did want to continue with my Ice Home read. Um, so I did want to like, you know, get back into it. And uh, this was really fun. I had a blast. What else can I say? <laughs> And then the final book to talk about is The Fisherman by John Langan. This is a cosmic horror and it was so good. I gave this book five stars. It's been a while since I've given a horror a five stars, so like I really needed this. Um, but this is the type of cosmic horror that I like. This one is just so fucking good. I was so hooked into it. While I was reading this book, it really feels like I am listening to like an epic tale from someone. Like I would imagine myself like sitting like by a fire in like a tavern and this like old weathered man comes and he's like I'm gonna tell you the story about my life and then he proceeds to tell you like the most crazy epic story ever um, and that's how I felt like I feel like I was like sucked in the moment the story started the writing style was fantastic there's so many good quotes in here I was like really into the fishing aspect of this and I could not care less about fishing but this author made me care about fishing. Like, I was like, yes, tell me more about the trout you caught, sir. It was just like everything I needed from a cosmic horror. There is kind of like a story within the story type of thing happening as well, which is something I also really like in books. Um, I really get sucked into both of them and I'm like, okay, tell me more. Um, I just had a really good time with this and I have no complaints. I thought this book was so good. There's a lot of themes about grief. I don't know if it would be considered a grief horror or not. I don't read a lot of grief horror to be able to say yes or no. But if you do like themes of grief, there are themes of grief in here. But I feel like the creature feature aspect of it helped a lot with like the grief because grief horror isn't a genre that really like pulls me. Like I don't really like go out of my way to read stories about grief. So um, I feel like the rest of the story really balanced that out for me and made me really like enjoy this even more. I just had a really good time with it. I definitely recommend it. It is so freaking good. So those are all my reads for May. I had a really fun reading month. Thank you Lexi for asking me to be a part of Escape the Readathon. I had such a fun time and also shout out to Film Crew for winning the readathon. We did it guys. That was so much fun. Um, and I can't wait for next year's Escape the Readathon. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to keep up more content from me. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.